Good early afternoon. Good Friday early afternoon. Welcome to, I guess this would be part four uh, of the poor man's bodywork series. And I'm going to be working on the uh, step here in the corner. The paint is dry to the touch, but it's tacky in some places. So I'm not going to be doing very much. I'm not, actually I'm not going to be doing anything on the inside. Um, or anything else for a few days uh, make sure that the paint is hardened up good uh, but I can work on the step and when I sand and stuff it's you know the paint is no longer wet to the touch so I can you know this dust gets on there I can just sweep it off with my little brush so uh, we're gonna get started I got my best clothes on today of course as you can plainly see um, I want to make one more same announcement I appreciate all the comments on the uh, on this series uh, I've been just too busy to answer the comments uh, from my regulars and people that normally don't chime in I, I just been too busy I just have no time to sit and answer them uh, and I haven't had it I haven't been watching videos I'm just too damn busy I work until like 5:30 on this project uh, this morning it wasn't in the 40s, it was in the 50s, but I had some running around to do in the morning. And um, I don't know if I'm going to be doing anything this weekend or not. Um, I got some very sad news. Uh, yesterday, one of my cousins uh, called and says, my cousin Rose, who I am very close to, uh, passed on. She was 75 years old. She's 11 months uh, younger than me, and she had a lot of health issues. That was shocking. Uh, she's been sick for a long time. Uh, she had a lot of things wrong. So uh, I don't know when the funeral is going to take place. It could be Saturday. It could be Sunday. I really don't know. Uh, things up in the air, and um, you know, so it's a very sad um, time. Let's get started on this. Okay, um, I got my wire brush here, my heavy gloves, ball peen hammer just to check out the rust underneath there, and my uh, goggles, and my rusty metal primer. So what I'm going to do underneath, <coughs> on this corner here where the step is, where I showed you had the, the little rusted holes gone through, I want to do on this side, I want to clean that area out as much as I can. Um, I want to put I want to put rusty metal primer on it. And then I want to put a, a coat of bundle glass on the underside, just in the corner. I want to examine it with the flashlight and see how it is. I will not videotape that part. Um, but I will give you some videotape on the top here. I'm going to go up underneath the van now. I'll join you when I'm done with that job and we work on the top end. All right, uh, there's quite a bit of rust underneath there, I won't lie to you. Um, this, is, this is a $20 Harbor Freight angle drill that I bought a couple of years ago at Harbor Freight. Uh, and it worked very well for doing the pop rivets up underneath the... Uh, the wheel well inside where you put your feet because I needed uh, to get in there and put the driller holes for the pop rivets. This worked really well. So what I'm going to do underneath uh, here is I got, a, I got a container of wire brushes, all kinds, and I'm going to find one that will fit this and I'm going to go up underneath there with my goggles on and gloves and I'm going to um, clean down the metal as much as I can uh, in that area on the back side so that I could uh, put the rusty metal primer on there and then bondo when that sets up. Alright, I got it uh, ground down with the wire brush as much as I can. It's very, very rusty under there. Um, and I'm going to put this on there. I'm going to do that off camera because I have all I can do to squeeze under there because I've got it. I've got the van up on a, a 2 by 10 plank. I've got a, I've got ramps, but I have to dig them out. Uh, so I'm going to spray up in there 
and let that set and then I'm going to put bondo glass in there and I'm going to make up some uh, make a batch of it up and when I get done with that when that's set up I'm going to work on the top side and uh, I'll videotape all that okay while that's drying underneath there we're going to be sanding. I've already uh, treated this rust on this side with uh, rust, um, you know, the uh, navel jelly, but I didn't bother doing it underneath. I think the rusty metal primer is good for that. So, I don't know if you're going to see me with my ugly head in the way. You probably won't. And I'm left-handed, so this is going to be a challenge. But I can't put the camera any further over because the door don't open up wide enough. Uh, wait a minute now. Well, let me try to get you a shot through the door window. How's that? Huh? That better? All right. Now, I think you can see what I'm trying to do here. Now, I just got a sand down... Uh, off the, uh, the primer, the self-etching primer that I put on here a little bit. You don't need too much, just to roughen it up a little. I think uh, once I get the Bondo glass on the underside, which I gotta wait until the, like I say, the uh, rusty metal primer dries, then I'll be able to work up here and the Bondo isn't going to come uh, falling through. And the holes aren't that big. I can get my uh, index finger in this hole, and I can't even get my pinky finger in here, so they're not all that bad. Not for a van that's 1990, you know? How many of these are on the road? Not too many. I don't see hardly any of these vans, whether it be Chevy or uh, Dodge or whatever. I think we're roughing it up a little bit with the um, with the wire wheel. Uh, hang on a minute. By the way, how was that popcorn I uh, threw actually yesterday? Huh? I know it was a little stale, but uh, you know. In, you know, my dad always said, never look a gift horse in the mouth. So if the, the horse hasn't got any teeth, and if somebody gives you that horse, be, be appreciative of the horse. All right, I've got my goggles on here. My feeling is when I put the rust uh, navel jelly on here, which I never had much faith in uh, in that stuff anyways, because I've used it for years and uh, sometimes it works, most of the time it doesn't, the rust continues. So um, I kind of like the rusty metal primer myself. I think that does a lot better. Uh, otherwise, you, you just live with it, that's all. Here's my dust brush. I bet I didn't bring it out. I put everything away for the night when I finish up. I always believe in putting my tools away. Uh, if I owned a garage and uh, had everything inside, I'd leave it all out. You know, it saved me a lot of uh, time getting, it takes about a half hour to bring everything out that I need. And I didn't get everything out this morning. I didn't spend the time.
only brush I have, I don't have anything else. I have bigger ones. I have one that goes into the four and a half inch grinder, but those are very aggressive. We don't really need that. And the flap wheel and all that, but I don't have any. This is the only type I have uh, of all the ones that I've got in my collection. shines up here and I need it down here. You know, actually I do half-ass work, but, you know, it's a losing battle. Unless you cut it all out and weld in new pieces, you're never going to, you know, never going to get it. Well, get rid of it all. But I've done body work in other parts of this van, and it's still good. Yes, there are some parts that uh, do rust through again, like on the outside, near the gas cap, towards the rear wheel that I showed you. I'm a little bit drunk, I'm a little bit drunk, cause I'm drinking, drinking, drinking. I'm a little bit drunk, I'm a little bit... Now that didn't take long, did it? I think uh, I'm going to use Bondo glass on the bottom, underneath, and regular Bondo in here. And the reason for that is I can work with the regular Bondo. The Bondo glass, as I told you before, comes out, uh, you know, long strings and it runs off the side of the can. And it's harder to finish. You know, it doesn't come out with a smooth finish to it. It's not made for that, it's made for strength. But if I get the Bondo glass underneath this, I can use regular Bondo on this. And uh, yes, I've got some little sanding dust on this. This paint is dry to the touch, but under the seats, uh, on the other side is a little tacky. This is dry to the touch, but you don't want to walk on it. Put your feet on it, because it can scratch up. The paint is not fully cured. So, it's looking good, if I do say so myself. I know some of you will say, that's a piece of crap. Why are you doing this? No, only, only ones that would say that are the idiotic trolls, you know because their IQs are about like their shoe size, you know. Like I say, I do, for what equipment I have to work with, and for somebody that not only don't know how to weld, but does not own a welder, and all the proper tools, and a place to work where you can make noise with grinders and stuff, uh, I think it's as good as it gets. all to here. We're good in here. We'll double check here. Up here is where it was a little rusty. Oh, that's good solid metal. Okay. And all to here. No 
problem. You just got a hole here, which is big enough for my screwdriver to go in, and you got a bigger one here. That is probably three quarters of an inch long and about as almost as wide as the base of this. I hear something. I don't know if we got company or not. I'm not expecting any company. Well, that was a shock. A lot of times I'll get text on my flip phone. I don't even bother. I can't read that stuff. So it just comes with the phone. You know, the Verizon phone that we got. I don't. I can't see it. So for all I know, I could have got text on it. But I do know that my cousin passed away um, yesterday morning, which was Thursday morning, and I got a call yesterday, I don't know, 5, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, I don't remember, from one of my other cousins. And Rosie and I go back. She was the only, one of the only cousins I've stayed, you know, really close with. You know, it was my, uh, I mean, my dad's brother's daughter. So it was my first cousin, and her husband Sam uh, died of cancer last October. Uh, he was younger than her. And, uh, he was a carpenter and everything, and he got he got cancer all over his body. Damn shame. Probably gonna uh, work on this today. Just try to get this done. And um, probably take the weekend off because, like I say, I don't really know when the service is going to be. I figure it's either going to be Saturday, Sunday, or Monday. Um, and we should hear very soon. We used to have. And many times Rosie and Sam used to come down to the cookhouse along with the rest of the family and we had some good times up there. Well, you didn't see the aggravation that I wasted a huge amount of Bondo trying to go from underside. I should know better to only do it from the top, and that's exactly what I did here. I put Bondo, mixed it up, nice Bondo glass. I had a good chunk here. I went up underneath and tried to do it, and it ran down my hand. It ran down the other side of the spatula. Story of my life. You cannot bondo overhead. I should know that. So we're doing every, We're doing all the bondo on the top. We're not putting any bondo underneath. I'm just going to spray it with the coating and call it good. That's all there is to it. I was hoping that I'd have a, a coating of bondo underneath too to give it more strength, but I'm not going to be able to do that. The only way I'm going to be able to do it is to put the Bondo on with my fingers and put a glove on. I might do that and go up underneath and, and reach it in there. You, you cannot put it on overhead with a spatula. It just will not work. I wasted a huge chunk of Bondo glass and I'm very low on it. But this will work. I put a little, supposed to be stainless steel, but it's not. Uh, steel wool, a pot scrubber, but it's not. It's uh, you can put a magnet on it. Um, you go to these stores and you you get 
what looks like stainless steel pot scrubbers, and they're not stainless steel. You can put a magnet to them, but I don't normally carry a magnet around with me to find that out. So uh, that's what I like to use, because you use regular steel, it's just going to rust out. But now it's mixed in with the Bondo glass. There's only a little bit just to keep the Bondo from falling through the hole. I tried with a little piece of sheet metal to get it up underneath there, and I put, tried to get the Bondo in, and then I tried to put the sheet metal up against it so it would cure, and it was all over my hands. Of course, I didn't put gloves on because I didn't think I needed it for that little area. And what a mess I was. Finally got it out. Oh, I'm telling you. So, all right, so that's setting up. And, and I am going to use Bondo glass in here because um, I've decided for strength, I think I'll do it. And then finish it off with regular Bondo, you know, when it comes in here. For these holes here, I'm going to use uh, uh, Bondo glass. But what I'm going to do on this hole in the corner here is I'm going to put some Bondo on my glove finger and work it up underneath there and get it to go in this hole on the back side. Let that set up because I don't care about what it looks like underneath. And when it pokes through the hole when it hardens up then I can shave it down with sandpaper or something. And, or a screwdriver, a flat blade, and dig away until it's smooth, and then do the bondo up here. So that's the way we're going to do it. And the same with this hole here. Uh, the so-called stainless steel that's in there, I'll get a handful of bondo and work it around. Like, like a kid would play with putty, you know? That's what you got to do with these things. You, I should know you cannot bondo on overhead. It just don't stay up there. Gravity makes it fall and what a mess okay so I'll come back on this in a little bit oh, man, I'll tell you it's a good thing this paint is dry because there's a lot of dust here all I'm doing is sanding by hand so we'll come back okay I'm going under the van I got the bondo made I got my glove on this is not the Harbor Freight glove. This is some old medical gloves that I've had for many, many, many years. Uh, the flashlight on. I'm going to take and pick it up and put it up in there. Um, it's hardened up so I won't have to worry about it pushing through. And it looks like a crappy job underneath there, but it's all covered with the Bondo. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit it with uh, undercoating underneath. That's it. Um, it already has the rusty metal primer on. I put that on after I wire brushed as much as I could. Uh, and uh, rusty metal primer. When that dried, I put the Bondo glass underneath, and the piece here, this hole, was big enough after I got to grinding it out. It was almost could get my thumb in, but not quite. So um, I put the little stainless steel in there, but about that much of it hung down underneath. And I couldn't do anything with it, so I had to pull it out. But the... Okay, I'm going to have one of the dirtiest ZE1s ever. They're all dirty from my hands. I try to, not to, but they get dirty. Ugh. Well, 
I got it as good as I can get it. Uh, and we got a little, couple little pieces that I smoothed out as much as I can sticking up in the corner here, but that's okay. That'll give me something to bind to. So uh, we're going to mix up some Hondo now. Stirring stick. That's old, that's Bondo, that's what I do. They get, they get built up. And they become this size eventually. <laughs> Alright, we get that. And we already needed the hardener. You need the need the tube. Alright, now I've got small applicator here, a little better one here, and this is for mixing it after I do the initial one. We just put a little hardener in, but not much. I'll probably be sorry I didn't put enough in, but there isn't a lot of Bondo here because I don't want to go too crazy with it. I find mixing it this way, they tell you not to as I told you in the other video, but it mixes better this way. Definitely mixes better. And then I roll the stick around. I don't like taking too long to mix it because uh, it'll uh, harden up on me. Now I use this to do a little bit of mixing. Right, now we'll put this down with the rough one and we'll finish it. hitting that screw when it's messing up my spatula. We gotta make, I didn't mix up that much, so I didn't get that corner. It's gonna be very hard to get into that corner. And uh, I may have to use my fingers to get it in the corner. Cause I can't get it in there and I'm gonna have to put gloves on and go around and, and do it because it's the only way I know. So. All right, so it's a small amount of Bondo. Uh, and I keep forgetting to bring my glasses out here so I can see this. Don't look too bad. Yeah, I didn't put a lot of hardener in so I can still manipulate that. And I'm gonna be daring. The only way sometimes you Sometimes you gotta do it. Wiping on my Sunday best. <laughs> All right, we'll let that set because I got three or four more coats to do on that. All right. I'll give you a little different angle, but I'll probably be in the way. Um, but you pretty well know what I'm doing here. Uh, I got a sand desk area. Bondo was pretty hard, so uh, I probably, probably waited a little too long to sand it. Got a little sun on the subject here, you can see it better. Let me uh, get you in here. Time is flying away here. Um, yeah, what I'm going to have to do, in order to get in this corner, I'm going to have to do the bundle finger thing because I got to get in in here and I can't do it with a 
I mean, I can go like this and like this, but you got to get into the because you want the, the corner a little rounded, and the only way you're going to get that is with the, you know, by hand. All right, I got some regular Bondo now, not the Bondo glass. It's easier to work with, and it smooths better, and you know, it makes like the finishing. you need to really see me very close here. You pretty well know what I'm doing. Okay, we got this one for the finishing. And we got our mixing stick, which is getting thick with Bondo. <laughs> but it's all cured, so it's not going to contaminate. When it gets about this thickness, then I get rid of it, or I cut it off, you know, usually I cut it off and use it. Well, I got the goop here. It does a pretty good job, but it doesn't have the pomace in it. But I got my hands pretty clean, not perfect. I worked this in my hands quite a bit. And then what I do is I take a, a, one of those rasps, you know, that, they, they, that you rasp the body work down, you know, the bondo down. I gently run that over my fingers and it takes it right off. See? Fingernails are dirty. Well, who the hell cares? All right. I think we're ready for some sanding. This uh, is the uh, the lightweight Bondo, or the regular, whatever you want to call it. Uh. Oh, I got to get some more sandpaper here. I've got plenty of it. fairly smooth. You got grooves here, 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 and here, and I covered up the screw here. So that's as good as I can get that. It's fairly smooth. So I'm going to hit this with uh, some 220. I'm not too worried about this because the mat goes down here, but I want to hit the sides with 220, and then I'm going to hit it um, with the primer, but in here mostly. Um, I mean, I can spend another couple hours on this, but I'm not going to do it. I hate sanding, honest to God, I hate it. But you know, that spot well, see, like here? That's what that is. And I'll probably mix up a little bit more. I'm not worried about this one, but these two here. And this little valley here, I'll just hit this a little here. I want to take the mat over and see how far it goes. I think the mat goes up to about here. So I'm not too worried about this because you're not going to see that anyways. 
So I'll bring the mat over. I'll do that off camera just to establish where I want to be. This is fairly smooth, so I think once it's painted, you're not going to really notice it. And I mixed up a little more, and I got a new spatula. I have a, quite a few new ones, but I like to use the old ones in the rough areas because they get chewed up, you know, uh, going over rough spots. So I'm going to try to mix this up. They passed an ordinance in the town. They said I had to tear it down. That little brown shack out back so dear to me. Though the health department said his day was over and dead. But I'll stand forever in my memory. I could orbit around the sun, march with General Washington, or be a king upon a golden throne. It was just a humble hut where a man could set his butt. And he still meditate with the yellow jackets. This is not a job for me to be working in this position. Just a humble hut, and its door was never shut, and a man could get inside without a dime. Who let him tear that little brown building down? Don't let him tear that precious building down. Don't let him tear that little brown building down. Or there's not a lot of like it in the country or the town. It wasn't so long ago. I went tripping through the snow to that little house out back, my old hound dog. It was just a humble hut. That's it, folks. I'm sanding it. Finishing sanding it, and that's going to be it. The best I can do. We'll let that set up. We'll get some 220 on it. I got some 3M 220 emery cloth. So I got from that yard sale with all those tools, with all this paper stuck together, you know, it was in a wet location. I think still got a lot of this left. Um, <clears throat> all right. Uh, you can see how I got the corner rounded off. You could never get that with a spatula. This is ready for sanding. This, this is about as good as I can get it. I guess I could have come in here with my finger and did that too. But I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to sand it smooth. I'll do that off camera. And I'll hit the red oxide right through here. I don't need to do the red oxide over here because this is already primer on here anyhow, the gray primer. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this gray with uh, gray Rust-Oleum paint. Uh, to match the driver's side. So let me get to work on this. I gotta work in, in here a little bit too. I think it's ready for sanding. Yep, okay. 
All right, I'm going to give you a close-up of it. Probably you're sorry I did. It's the best I can do. It's the very best I can do. It's smooth. It's smooth here. Not really great here. That's the best I can do. It's smooth here. I hit it lightly with the 220 all, all on the sides here. So I'm going to mask this off and spray this because all I got is spray um, red oxide primer. So I have to use it. All I have is Rust-Oleum gray paint spray paint. I'll have to use it. But I'm not going to be doing that today. We're going to, I want to put some primer on this. I don't like to have exposed Bondo. Uh, I don't know, it's probably not good. You should prime it. So I'm going to do that, and then we're going to finish up on this video for today. All right, I'm going to leave all that paper and stuff in there because I'm going to be spraying that with uh, Rust-Oleum Gray, similar to what you see down here. And... That's it. I gotta stay away from this. There's strong fumes in there. <laughs> so, uh, all might get a deep breath out here. <sighs> okay, that's it. The next step will be, uh, I'll just be painting that, and that's not gonna be done on video. Uh, with the gray rust-oleum uh, enamel, gloss enamel. And um, that will conclude the floor work other than putting the rubber in and probably putting that crappy aluminum trim back because that's all I've got. I haven't got anything else. I don't know where to ever get something like that. And then I'm going to be working on the, oh, the next step I should say the next place I'm going to be working on is over here. Yep, I'm going to take care of that. This galvanizer is holding up good. I never bonded this. I just put pop rivets in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the cutting wheel and cut this off here. And the way this is, the way I put this in, it slides up underneath here. So I could probably get a piece to go there too. So I'll probably go about here. I'll have to examine the inside of this and see what, how bad it is. It seems to be very good up through here. It's just, just this area. But that's the next project, I think, unless something else comes up. So I'm going to take Saturday and Sunday off for this project. I don't know when the uh, funeral service will be for my cousin Rose. Um, we haven't heard yet. I just checked in the house. It's about 4.30 in the afternoon right now, and nothing yet. My wife is on Facebook, so she would know, get the notice. Then I got to put the cover back on. There's a plastic cover that goes over here with two screws that go up under here. That covers up the heater box, I guess that's what it is. I don't know. And we just got to wait for the rain, the next rain, to see uh, when, uh, where this is leaking. So I want to thank all of you for your kind comments and also for your suggestions on the leak and so forth. Um, but again, I want to emphasize I have not had time to answer your comments. Please don't feel that I'm ignoring you. It's just that I am so overwhelmed. By the time I get cleaned up, it'll be close to 6 o'clock. And I got to scrub what grease and paint I got on me off and then throw my ugly body in the shower and look civilized for the weekend. And uh, and I, I may be working on this probably Monday. It depends on where the when the funeral is. So uh, it could be Sunday, it could be Monday, but whatever. But I'm taking the weekend off, so there'll be no more body work for uh, several days. Thank you all for your support. I appreciate it. I try to do things to show you what someone can do with limited resources. Thanks again. I appreciate all your kind comments. Until we meet again, whatever it is you do, don't put off tomorrow what you can do today. 
because you may like it today and you may want to do it again tomorrow. Doesn't that sound good?